I welcome you all to the uh, module number 9 of the course titled uh, Psychology of Emotion Theory and Applications. So, this is the module 9 where we are talking about uh, the concept of emotion regulation and coping and uh, this is the third lecture of the module 9 and overall it is lecture number 22. So, today's topic is uh, adaptive emotion regulation using mindfulness. So, before we talk about today's lecture, uh, just a brief recap of last lecture. Uh, in the last lecture, we talked about adaptive emotion regulation uh, using ch or changing by, by changing thought processes. In that context, we discussed mostly cognitive reappraisal and cognitive restructuring, how changing thought processes uh, can be used as a tool for emotion regulation. So, that was the focus in the last lecture. Uh, so, we, we try to understand these concepts using ABC model of Albert Ellis, uh, where we discussed that how um, event they do not directly lead to consequences or emotional consequences. It is between the event and consequences the belief system or the kind of thought processes uh, which are activated by an event that actually causes the emotional consequences. So, we discuss the details of the model with examples and so on and at the end we discussed how to identify various irrational or catastrophic thoughts which are responsible for various destructive or negative emotions that you experience and how to change them using this whole framework of ABC model. So, these are the some of the things that we have discussed in the last lecture where we understood that we can change our thought processes in a more constructive way and as a result our emotions also automatically changes. So, today we will be talking about how mindfulness can be used to as a tool for emotion regulation or adaptive emotion regulation. So, we will be discussing the concept of mindfulness, its roots and components. So, we will be talking about therapeutic effects of mindfulness. We will be use, uh, we will be also discussing how we can deal with our thought processes with using mindfulness and we will also discuss some of the uh, research finding in the context of how mindfulness can be used for uh, adaptive emotion regulation and at the end we will be talking about some of the practice aspect of mindfulness. So, this is how we will be uh, going in today's lecture. So, let us start today's lecture. So, the, the mindfulness is basically is a type of uh, meditation technique mostly uh, kind of conceptualized it as a meditation technique uh, where the focus uh, or the idea is to kind of open it, opening up and kind of become more alert to the continuous passing stream of thoughts, images, emotions, sensations or even surroundings. So, the idea is you just observe the various phenomena that is happening in the present moment without identifying or kind of uh, becoming or kind of uh, kind of you know uh, identifying with them so that you do not flow with the flow of thoughts and emotions you just become a witness to that. So, we will be talking in detail about uh, the this concept of mindfulness. So, the idea is it is a kind of specific type of meditation technique uh, that can be used to enhance our awareness and which can help us to regulate emotions. So, just to understand uh, mindfulness, it is also better to understand the opposite construct which is called as mindlessness. So, how can we understand that you know. So, for example, these some of the examples where we kind of uh, this mindlessness the whole construct can come into the play. One is for example, when you let us say when we come in a room and forget why. So, you are completely not aware why you came to a place and suddenly you find okay, why I came here you do not know. No, so, completely you are not aware of your surroundings and your thought processes, you are com completely lost in something. So, this is a state of mindlessness, your, your awareness is not at all in the present moment. Other examples include rushing through activities without being attentive to them. So, we kind of sometimes do lot of things and without being aware of it, you know what we are doing, you know very mechanically and machine like. So, that is also an example of mindlessness, uh, breaking or spilling things because of carelessness, inattention, thinking of something else. So, kind of when your attention is not there in the things that you are doing that is also an example of mindlessness, snacking without being aware of eating. So, you kind of eat and stuff yourself without being aware key what kind of things you are eating. So, you are lost in something else. So, that is an example of mindlessness. Uh, not no, noticing changes in your surroundings, things might be happening and you are not at all aware what is happening. So, these are some of the examples of mindlessness. So, we can understand mindfulness is just opposite to that in the sense, you become much more aware and conscious 
of the moment whatever is happening and you are more in touch with what is happening in the present moment so we'll be talking more about the details of this uh, concept so the concept of mindfulness uh, has become quite popular in uh, today's world and uh, especially in the last few decades the lot of research has gone into the concept of mindfulness and lot of positive impact of mindfulness on human behavior has been observed in various researches for example you know one of the bibliometric analysis of publication uh, recently in 2021 it reported uh, that between 1966 and 2021 uh, a total of 16581 research articles focused on mindfulness uh, they kind of discovered at least some of the major research publications but there may be more than these also in terms of numbers so at least they could find more than 16000 publications in the last few decades so it shows the popularity of the concept the number of publication has shown a significant exponential increase after 2006 after 2006 the popularity has exponentially increased in terms of which could could be visible in the publication and so on notably nearly half of these publications are mostly related to psychology and other 150 is associated to the field of psychiatry and associated disciplines so mostly psychology psychiatry these are the disciplines uh, which are basically uh, been publishing in this area so this is quite uh, uh, in terms of uh, popularity in terms of uh, you know uh, research uh, output uh, the concept has been well researched and uh, and its popularity is visible from this data So the concept of mindfulness has also been used in various therapies and clinical practices uh, some of the evidences or some of the therapeutic approach which integrates mindfulness for bringing about change in uh, in the emotions or in in kind of thought processes and so on uh, some of these therapies uh, the names are here uh, for example there is a uh, program of mindfulness based stress reduction or uh, the negative emotions and stress are kind of dealt with mindfulness based practices uh, mindfulness based cognitive therapy acceptance and commitment therapy this also includes mindfulness concept of mindfulness in the therapy itself uh, dialectical behavior therapy also included some aspects of mindfulness uh, mindfulness based eating awareness training program also includes mindfulness and it is applied more specifically in the eating context so there are diverse therapies which actually focused on the idea of mindfulness and it is uh, integrated in these therapies and uh, these are kind of uh, evidence shows these are kind of very successful therapies in bringing about positive change among clients now what is the root root of mindfulness from where this whole practice came about so uh, basically the mindfulness has its roots in the ancient eastern buddhist philosophy so basically this practice came from the buddhism and uh, where uh, there is a word called sati which is loosely translated as mindfulness in the english word and uh, so basically it came from the buddhist philosophy this whole practice uh, the professor kabat zin uh, is one of the most uh, prominent figure in terms of popularizing this concept in the academic field and the uh, and kind of in the field western world where he uh, he is a colleague in university of uh, massachusetts uh, who introduced the idea of mindfulness to the western world he himself actually received extensive training in this mindfulness from diverse tradition buddhist tradition and then he made it more secularized version of it without kind of removing all the uh, religious context and so on so just a pure practice where the training of the mind involves he kind of used it as in a secular context and so that it is more accepted in the wider audience particularly the western mindset and uh, he integrated this concept into various therapies so uh, here is the photograph of kabat zin he is effort resulted in the creation of first uh, formalized mindfulness based intervention uh, which is called mindfulness based stress reduction program which is uh, kind of uh, very popular and is kind of used in various hospitals and therapy settings so he is one of the main prominent figure in terms of popularizing this concept and obviously a uh, later on lot of many researcher came into and uh, they also started focusing on this concept and uh, 
kind of finding uh, the impact of mindfulness on various aspects. So, what is mindfulness? So, one thing is that you know, uh, the initially I just gave a broad, very broad definition. So, we will be just looking into more specific aspects of it. So, when we talk about uh, a mindfulness, one thing is that it is not about changing thoughts. In the last lecture, we talked about how changing thoughts, by changing thoughts, we can regulate emotion. Uh, mindfulness as a technique is not at all focused on changing thoughts. We will see why, why it is not focusing on changing thoughts. Uh, it is not just about a relaxation technique or anything. No? Relaxation could be associated with it, but the focus is not re to relax. Relaxation techniques are different. Mindfulness is different. So, it is not a religious based thing, uh, it, although the origin is from the Buddhist philosophy, but the, it is a pure mental technique uh, and uh, there is no religious belief involved in it. So, mindful, what is mind, these are not kind of sometimes people kind of uh, 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 thought thing that you know mindfulness uh, may be associated with some religious or other thing, but when we talk about it as a therapy or as a technique, it has nothing to do with any religion. It is just a pure mental technique. So, these are some of the misconceptions that could be associated. So, these are not the mindfulness. So, as we already talked about, Professor Kabat Zinn is uh, one of the first academicians who introduced and popularized this whole concept of mindfulness in the academic and research area and particularly the western world. He also founded mindfulness based stress reduction program, intervention program which is very popular and uh, implemented in various hospitals and therapies and clinics and so on. He defined mindfulness very specifically. He said uh, the mindfulness as uh, paying attention in a particular way. So, he said mindfulness is primarily about paying attention, but paying attention in a very specific way. How? What kind of paying attention? He said it is on purpose in the present moment and non-judgmentally. So, there are three aspects to it. So, basically obviously when you pay attention there has to be some purpose and the attention will bring you in the present moment and when you pay attention on something it is without any judgment. Do not you are not thinking about it just observing a phenomena. So, basically uh, the three component that came about uh, uh, Prof, uh, Shapiro and her colleagues kind of uh, brought three major components from this definition that is one purpose which is called intention. When you pay attention on specific purpose, you pay attention on something. So, there is an intention to it. Uh, then paying attention which is obviously, the attention part of it and in a particular way or in a with a particular attitude. So, there is an attitude party. So, there is an intention, there is an attention and there is an attitude. So, these are the three major components of mindfulness. So, let us see uh, in detail what are these three components. So, when we talk about intention obviously, for doing anything we need some intention. Without intention we will not do anything. So, so even if, if you pay attention on something there has to be some intention behind it. So, this is the first stage for doing any kind of uh, behavior or any action that we do. So, intention sets the stage for all human activities. First, there has to be intention in the mind, then we do something. So, similarly, for uh, mindfulness also, people may have different intentions, why they want to do it. People may intend to, intend to do mindfulness for various reasons, such as uh, somebody may want to do mindfulness for stress reduction, for emotion regulation, for self-exploration, for enlightenment. So, diverse things could be, you know, uh, associated with the mindfulness. And all these things can be done through mindfulness. So, people can kind of uh, use mindfulness for diverse purposes. So, what is your intention that will also determine the outcome of the mindfulness itself. Research indicated that <coughs> outcomes of mindfulness practice correlate with the intention. So, what depending on your intention, the outcome was also kind of determined by your intention itself. So, basically by intention you set the stage and outcome kind of follows accordingly. For example, those who practiced for stress reduction attained better coping with stress and those who uh, practice for self exploration attained better insight into their self. It is a kind of commonsensical in a sense, what, whatever the intention I have, my whole effort will be in that direction and that particular practice, if it kind of facilitates those intentions to bring up the best uh, 
kind of uh, bring out the results according to the intention. So, mindfulness can be used for diverse purposes and this intention sets the stage and outcomes are kind of decided accordingly. So, the, this is one component intention so, people have to give make some intention why they want to do it. Second is attention obviously, it is the central part of uh, mindfulness. Our life everything depends on paying attention. If uh, we cannot do anything without paying attention. So, attention is very important for success in life, for doing or kind of you know increase productivity in anything. For doing anything successfully, attention is the most important part. Without giving attention, we cannot kind of you know bring about any kind of activities or any kind of things we cannot do without paying attention. So, attention is the core of human life and success in various endeavors. So, mindfulness is about also kind of training your mind or your attention uh, to pay attention on things in a particular uh, context. So, this is something very important by mindfulness we are also training our attention. How you are training our attention? This paying attention involves observing the operations one, operations of one's moment to moment internal and external experience all contents of consciousness. Okay? So, mindfulness practice can involve uh, diverse things. Uh, the only thing is that your attention sh should come to the moment and in this moment there could be diverse things. You can pay attention to the body, you can pay attention to the mind, you can pay attention to the surroundings. Everything is here and now and when our mind kind of focuses on that in a more open way uh, that that is where the mindfulness comes into the play. So, the kind of attention is at the center part of it. You have to bring your attention through the moment. Content could kind of differ from practice to practice and within the same practice with the passage of time content could change, but attention is at the center of it. So, here paying attention includes attending to our present experiences uh, moment to moment here and now by uh, suspending all interpretation and judgment. So, this is another important thing you pay attention, but there is no judgment you just observe what is the phenomena without making critical interpretations so, that is the part of thought processes here thought is not involved just paying attention thought may come, but you do not kind of engage in it. If automatic thought comes that is ok, but you do not engage with it, you do not make conscious interpretation of things, you just observe what is there. So, that is another part of how attention is paid in mindfulness. So, such attention takes us out of non-stop wandering uh, disturbed mind to our senses in the present moment. So, it help us to come to our senses in the moment and make connection with what is there in the present moment, because that is the only moment which is real. All the other moment past and future are not real in a sense that because they are not they do not exist only the this moment exists. So, it is kind of uh, making stronger connection with what is there in the present moment, which help us to kind of put ourselves or bring ourselves back uh, from all this uh, kind of remunerative thought processes. The third component is attitude, it refers to the uh, qualities of attention, how you pay attention. So, one thing is attention, but how you pay attention little bit of it we have already discussed, but what attitude you take when you pay attention. So, that is an important aspect of the mindfulness practice. Uh, so, mindfulness also includes paying attention to our internal and external experience without evaluation or interpretation, but with hard qualities such as acceptance, passion, openness and so on. So, the idea is you pay attention without making any judgment. So, if you observe your thought do not say it is a good thought, bad thought then it is an interpretation. So, there is no interpretation just observing whatever is coming to your mind or when you pay attention to the body whatever is happening without making any kind of mental interpretation. So, you just with acceptance with openness you just observe. So, that is the attitude taken in the practice of mindfulness. So, this quality such qualities of attitudes gives us break from non-stop resistance. So, mostly we resist if something is not pleasurable we resist we do not want to do it we want to change it then kind of lot of thought processes kind of get stimulated out of such resistance then we get into the cycle of too many thought processes. So, mindfulness simply there is no resistance you just observe what is there. So, without resistance the mind flow cannot kind of all this ruminative thought automatically stops because they kind of get generated by resistance. 
So, this non-stop resistance by trying to push away unpleasant experiences and craving for pleasant experiences is one of the reasons for a lot of uh, disturbances. So, in mindfulness you suspend all this. Uh, so, this may be called as a uh, peace and real happiness in some sense that without any uh, resistance you are just uh, observing whatever is happening without fighting or without resistance. So, that is the attitude that one take in the practice of mindfulness. So, you pay attention, but in a particular with, uh, with a certain attitude, which is the key to uh, kind of finding a solution for all the non-stop and ruminative thought processes and all the disturbed emotions. So, we will see little bit more about it. So, these are the three component. So, intention, attention and attitude, three aspects one has to take care while practicing mindfulness. Now, uh, research has shown that the mindfulness has many therapeutic effects or many positive effects in terms of healing, in terms of kind of in, in, in terms of uh, various problematic aspects, how it can heal various uh, behavioral problems. So, some of the research findings are kind of summarized here. So, research on mindfulness has identified diverse benefits, some are as follows. So, research has shown that it also help helps in stress reduction. It increases positive effect and decreases anxiety, depression and negative effect. So, these are the impact the people who uh, kind of practice meditation, they can have positive impact on all this, they, it, it can help in stress reduction. In fact, this whole program of mindfulness based stress reduction is already a kind of there as an established program. Uh, it also increases a positive effect and decreases anxiety, depression and negative effect. These are kind of effect of mindfulness when people do it even for other purposes the side effect could be these things. Improvements in working memory, increases in uh, relationship satisfaction, uh, increases in relationship satisfaction, decreases conflicts in relationship, increase immune functioning and physical health, improvements in overall well being. So, these are some of the broad findings. So, it seems to be you know one of the key one thing that can solve diverse aspects. So, let us see how mindfulness kind of impacts our thought processes. So, if you do a simple thought uh, experiment where if you just try for one minute or two minute to stop your thoughts. So, this is something you try to stop your thoughts. If you just try to do it for one minute or two minute this experiment anybody can do it. Just try to stop your thoughts whatever thoughts, thoughts are coming to your mind try to stop them try not to think for one or two minutes and see what happens. One thing that we will realize that you know it is very difficult to stop thoughts by not trying to think about them. So, you cannot directly stop thoughts by fighting with it or kind of suppressing it. Generally, these are not successful strategies. You cannot stop thoughts by fighting with it or not trying to think about it because something will come in your mind. So, generally, so this is what happens. Now, mindfulness tries to deal with this thought in a completely different ways. So, that we will be trying to see. So, Kabat-Zinn says thought is a thought is not a fact, a thought is just a thought. Many people take thought as kind of facts, as a fact. Most of the thoughts which are related to about ourselves, about the world, future, these are kind of opinions and constructions that we do in our mind based on whatever we feel at that moment. And most of these thoughts are not kind of facts, they are just what we think. They may be true, they may not be true and many people take them as a fact and uh, we get influenced by them. So, thoughts are not fact, they are just thoughts. So, that is one of the important thing. Thoughts are helpful for practical purposes like problem solving, creativity, making plans, all these things obviously thoughts are needed and these are integral part of human you know, functioning. Without thoughts, we would not have one of the reasons why humans have so evolved. One of the reason is their ability to think. So, in that sense thought is very important part of our whole evolution and our oh, the complex uh, world that we have created. It is all product of thought actually. However, for most of people uh, thoughts can become problematic when they overwhelm us, especially when something goes wrong and we have negative thoughts and pulls us, it pulls us from the present moment. When we are too much in the thought processes, we are not in this moment, either we are in the past or future. So, too much of worry, anxiety, ruminations, these are the things which creates problem. So, thought has a problematic aspects to it obviously and practical and utility purpose to it which is fine. But uh, the problematic part is one of the reason why lot of 
emotion, emotional problem and psychological disturbances happens, where we need to deal with them. So, that is one of the important aspect to it. So, one thing is that when we are too much into the thought processes or ruminative thought processes, we are not in this moment. Most of these thoughts are either related to the past or either related to the future plans, future or whatever projection you want to see yourself in the future. Uh, so, most of the thoughts cuts us from the present moment and uh, maybe we need to deal with lot of things in the present moment, but when you are in too much in those thought processes, we are not connected to the present moment. So, you are either in the past or in the future. So, that is one of the problem. So, we are most often we are not in this moment now and non-existing past and future. Past is no more there, it is already gone, future is not yet. So, these are non-existent spheres where we are mostly navigating and the, only the existential part is the now which is, which is existing, there we are not, there, not present. So, if you see most of the problems are not in the present moment, these are all either in the, with the past or the future. So, if you can kind of remain uh, kind of connect with the present moment, lot of these problems automatically vanishes. It is because of too much of dwelling in the past or in the future, most of the problems are exaggerated and too much of this uh, catastrophic thoughts and all these ruminative thoughts are one of the main reason why we, one of the reason is that we are cut off from the present moment and dwelling too much either in the past or in the future. Sometimes it is fine, obviously we need to think about something in the past, we need to think about some future and other things, that is ok. But when it becomes kind of automatic ruminative thoughts about or dwelling too much in that, uh, then we will not be able to connect to the present which is the only moment, real moment, where we need to do lot of things. So, in the present moment mostly the problems are not there, problems either comes from the past and future. So, thoughts kind of cuts us from the present moment. So, that is one of the main problem that happens. So, in case of excessive worry, anxiety, rumination, people generally use various thought strategies. Generally, one is like suppression of thoughts, some people use distraction. Now, these strategies are generally temporary and can have rebound effect. So, lot of research was when people try to suppress thoughts or they do not want to think about something, they try to suppress, then it actually increases the thoughts. Because to suppress something, you have to remember it first. So, there is a paradoxical effect to it. So, thought suppression generally never works. The moment we want to try to forget something, it we end up thinking about it more. So, thought suppression, the distraction can work for some times, but again it may be very temporary things. So, a lot of this thought control strategy that people generally use are not really productive. Uh, they could be temporary and have rebound effects. It means they actually in turn actually increases the thought itself. Now, in mindfulness, the strategy that is used is, is completely different from suppression or distraction. Nothing of that sort is done in the mindfulness. When we try to deal with thoughts using mindfulness, we simply observe thoughts. We do not fight with it, we do not judge it, whatever comes, comes. You just become a witness. Witness means what? You are not participating in it automatically, whatever comes, comes. For example, you can close your eyes and see various thoughts coming on. You do not try to suppress it, you do not say it should come or it, sh or it should not come, you do not say it is uh, good or bad. It is a thing that is happening automatically and coming and you just observe as a witness. For example, just like sitting in a roadside and looking at strangers coming and going, you are not involved with them. So, that kind of relationships are built and uh, so that is a witnessing position. So, in mindfulness dealing with thought is basically you do not involve yourself in the thought processes, especially all this remunerative and <coughs> problematic thought processes when happens, you just observe them, let them come and go. Automatically when you do not involve yourself or identify yourself with those thoughts, then they lose their power. So, that is what one thing that happens, you know. So, you do not make any judgment, you do not say good or bad, so there is no resistance. When we say something as bad, we dislike it, when we say something as good, we like it. So, then kind of some kind of relationship and resistance are built up. So, that increases the thought process. When you do not judge it, let it come, whatever comes, let them pass, you give less importance, you do not identify or cling with them and you just observe without any attachment. So, if this kind of attitude can be maintained while observing the thoughts, then automatically the thought loses its power and the frequencies of such disturbing thought decreases automatically without really fighting with it. So, that is how it is different from thought suppression, distraction or other, other 
techniques which are not really uh, helpful in the long run. So, mindfully dealing with thought inclusions in a very passive approach. You pay attention, you come to the present moment, observe your thought what is happening, but you do not judge them, you do not suppress them, you let it come and go and you just observe. When you do not pay interest, they lose their power automatically, so the frequency decreases. So, this is the approach that is taken in the mindfulness while controlling the thoughts. So, we will be also talking little bit about practice later. So, the thing is, so mindfulness can help us to deal more productively with our thought processes and it can also kind of reduce all this ruminative, all this worry, all this vicious cycles of too much of thoughts and so on. So, this is how the approach and all the theoretical concepts associated with the mindfulness. So, we will be talking about mindfulness also uh, has also been found with uh, you know has a very strong connection with emotion regulations and then we will be talking about practice part of a little bit where things will be more clear in terms of how to do it. So, uh, the various research also shows that mindfulness uh, has also been linked with uh, emotion regulation. For example, you know Pixoto and uh, Gondrim in 2020 very recently that it uh, in a systematic review of literature they found uh, kind of summarize some of the connection of mindfulness with emotion regulation he reported from whatever observe existing uh, findings that one thing is that mindfulness has an impact on the process of selecting emotional strategies. So, what happens when you use mindfulness one thing is that you know you know certain shifts happens in your perception. Uh, so, overall the way you look at things changes you are no longer involved in the thought process itself. So, there is a kind of broader perspective. So, a shift in perception happens and that can change lead to change in the emotion regulation itself or in the strategies that one ad adopts for emotion regulation. So, so, mindfulness can impact the process of selection of emotion regulation strategies itself. So, for example, by it can facilitate the use of more adaptive strategies such as cognitive revelation. So, when you are no longer involved or too much caught up in the thought itself you are more like a witness. So, one thing you can kind of select the right kind of strategies uh, because when you are too much overwhelmed by emotions you cannot do anything you are just flowing with the emotion itself. Uh, so, that flexibility is not there, but in when one is able to kind of use mindfulness then one thing is that they are more likely to use more adaptive strategies such as cognitive re-evaluation mostly in the, uh, in the positive sense. Uh, mindfulness also decreases the use of dysfunctional strategies such as rumination and suppression that we have already discussed here. It automatically decreases all the rumination and suppression strategies because you do not do any suppression in the mindfulness. You simply just observe it. Uh, mindfulness also provides more flexibility in strategy selection because individuals are more present and receptive to the demands of the context. So, since you are more in connected with the present moment when you are doing mindfulness it gives you flexibility whatever is more suitable in the context one can use and see what is the right thing because you are kind of not caught up in the thought and emotion itself. Second important thing that mindfulness uh, can do is that you know it is associated with process of effective emotional regulation because it would increase good emotional differentiation capacity. So, why mindfulness is uh, related to more effective emotional regulation because Mindfulness help us to differentiate emotional differentiation capacity. You can very clearly because you pay attention to the moment and you can see what kind of emotions are coming up in your mind. You can differentiate positive, negative very clearly. You can see them when you are in the moment observing without getting caught up. You can very clearly see different kinds of emotions and you can differentiate with them and kind of use the appropriate strategy. So, your connection becomes much clear and uh, no, you your understanding also increases. So, that is why it is more effective leads to more effective emotion regulation. It also rapid emotional recovery after negative stimuli is also helped by mindfulness high emotional engagement with the emotional stimuli because you can engage because you can connect with it and see what kind of emotional things are going on in your mind. The moment you pay attention in a more non judgmental way you can see the phenomenon more clearly that is why the emotion regulation also happens in more effective ways. So, these are the some of the findings from the existing literature summarized by uh, this research. Some of the other research also showed some conceptual link between mindfulness and emotion regulation. They also kind of 
reported. For example, this uh, Williston and Rollins 2015 also reported many possible conceptual link between mindfulness and emotion regulation, how mindfulness is connected to emotion regulation. Some of these things we have already discussed, some of the other findings uh, are also listed here. So, uh, mindfulness may improve individual's ability to attend to specific aspect of the situation. So, one thing is that obviously, it help us to attend to very specific things of the situation, uh, because you are paying attention in the moment. So, for example, expanding beyond a narrow focus of the threat, for example, when you are very full of anxiety and stress, you are only focusing on the threat. If, if something is dangerous in the situation, you are fearful, focusing only on the fear aspect. So, the mindfulness helps you to come to your senses and see the other aspect of the situation. So, that is what one thing. So, from the threat, you can see other aspects of its situation. So, that also reduces your threat appraisal and the fear and the anxiety part of it. So, it is it's a kind of improve individual's ability to attend to specific aspect of the situation as well as aspects of their own experiences. The person can also see what is going on inside themselves in their body and mind uh, by promoting enhanced and expanded attention and awareness in the present moment and thus improve their detection of the need to implement regulation strategies. So, that is why it is kind of conceptually linked to better emotion regulation because of our ability to detect things in our body and the surrounding and because of the openness we are able to see what needs to be done and in terms of regulation of emotion. Mindfulness also kind of the quality of uh, this mindfulness awareness uh, also influences how people relate to their own internal experiences, thoughts, sensations, feelings, memories thus impacting emotion regulation by diminishing the intensity of emotional response, enhance effect tolerance and decreases negative valuations of emotional response. So, because of this paying attention particularly, it can influence our own internal experiences, our thought processes as we said the old immunitive thought can decrease a uh, lot of emotions which are kind of becomes very overwhelming especially when we identify and cling with them, they intensify when we witness them they decrease, uh, a lot of sensation also slowly decreases. So, uh, as a result our whole especially the negative emotions can go down primarily because of uh, mindfulness and it, that can be an adaptive part of it in terms of regulation of emotion. Mindfulness also bring about many positive changes in emotion regulation by the principle of exposure. Exposure means you get exposed to a lot of things which you are not aware of. Because of unawareness, so many emotions kind of uh, keep recycling within us because we are not facing them, we are not exposed to them. Unconsciously things are there and uh, things happens and we keep recycling those emotions again and again. But when we practice mindfulness, uh, we connect directly with the moment to moment experiences including negative emotions and observe them without avoidance and resistance. This approach reduces our negative uh, maladaptive and uh, neurotic emotional patterns such as phobias, anxieties and so on. Simply because you face them, encounter them rather than just forgetting and uh, suppressing them. The moment you forget and sup suppress them, they are, will be there within your system and keep recycling again and again. But the moment you face them, expose them. Uh, their impact reduces and uh, they will no longer bother you with the intensity that is that uh, that it, it, it used to bother you. So, kind of that the principle of exposure is also comes into the play uh, where we practice mindfulness. <coughs> mindfulness also kind of increases positive reappraisal of situation and it decreases automatic self referential thinking like worry, rumination, self criticism. Uh, that frequently uh, perpetuates emotional pain particularly those within emotional disorders. Uh, especially people with uh, certain emotional disorders, there is a perpetual emotional pain and a uh, lot of worry and anxiety, those things can be reduced by mindfulness. One of the reason is that you know a lot of this self referential thinking continues because of unconsciousness and not kind of coming to our senses in the moment. So, they keep recycling. So, the moment you come to the present moment and observe them, uh, they lose power and you are able to look at the situation and positively reappraise the situation and the context. So, 
basically the fundamentally the all the principles are about your shift in perception that is most important and everything comes in automatically falls into the place so mindfulness awareness also uh, uh, kind of enables flexible application of emotion regulation strategies this is something we have already already discussed so flexibility increases mental flexibility uh, psychological flexibility increases when you are caught up in something you cannot look at other things because you are in that uh, situation if you have some very st strong emotions you cannot look at other things because you are caught up in that the moment you are kind of detached from a particular emotions you can see everything whatever is there so flexibility increases you can choose what to do what not to do so that flexibility uh, gives um, kind of uh, kind of kind of improves individuals ability to engage and kind of uh, regulate emotions in a much better way. So, these are some of the important uh, connections, theoretical connections that researcher found between mindfulness and emotion regulation. Uh, we have discussed how various positive things could bring uh, by bring about by uh, mindfulness practice. Now, we will see generally uh, obviously the pr theoretical principles we have already understood. Now, we will see the practice part of it. How some of the very very briefly how it can be done in terms of practical life. So, mindfulness basically as we have already said it is involved paying attention to the now using some anchor. Now, to come to the present moment we need something to pay attention in the moment. So, that is called as an anchor that is called as an anchor. So, you establish a connection with something in the moment which is there in the present situation to come to the present moment. You have to pay attention to something. So, that is your anchor. So, in mindfulness practice various anchors are used like it could be your breath, it could be your body, it could be any object, it could be a sound, it could be a smell whatever it is. Okay. Mostly breath is used as one of the most important anchor in the mindfulness practice because it is always there in the present moment. We are breathing, no? incoming outgoing breaths are all the time happening in the moment. Body is there, mind always goes somewhere else, past, future it is all the time running, but body is all the time in here. So, body is all the time present and whatever is happening in the body particularly the breathing pattern automatically happening. So, in the practice of mindfulness, breath, breath is used as one of the important anchors. Body can also be used and other things. So, the idea is in mindfulness that you know mostly we are engaged in the thought processes, lost in the thought processes. When we are doing practice of mindfulness, so one thing is that you just pause for a moment and come to your senses. Now, that can be done by sitting in a particular posture, in a chair or even lying down or Mindfulness practice can be done even while walking or while eating also every, every time. So, initially it is always advisable that you know to understand this whole phenomenon of mindfulness you sit in a secluded place and try to grasp it. Then it can be done in the actions also because every moment the moment is always there you know. So, you can always connect with it. So, so the idea is you pause for a moment and sense what is there in the moment. So, overall you sense first what is happening in your body. You can also sense what is going on in your mind. You can sense what is happening around you also. So, at the different levels, we can exp expand our mindfulness practice from ourselves, within ourselves, inside ourselves to the outside environment. So, mindfulness can be done into different depending on the situation. It can be done in the different context. Okay? So, the idea is you pause, come to your senses and see, connect with what is there. One way of connecting is focus on what is happening inside your body to the mind and also with the surrounding. So, starting could be like you know you focus starting the best thing in initially obviously is to kind of practice it in a secluded place sit or even lying down can be there, but the best is that you sit in a chair or in a whatever posture more alert position and uh, you can close your eyes that is the best thing. And after closing guys, you just uh, come to the present moment and sense the body, Wh whatever the body, the feeling of body itself, come to your body, focus on your, the sense of the body that we have a body, you know, sitting on a chair in this moment. You just focus, pay attention to the body, body is always in the moment, 
in the present moment it is never in the past and future connect your stub uh, uh, no uh, connect with the sense of body and see what is happening you know so then one thing could be very clear that you know the breaths are going on no there is an incoming breath outgoing breath is happening automatically without your interventions this is an automatic phenomena that is going on so you don't try to change the breath whatever way the happening either it is fast slow the natural process let it be you just observe and sense that the whole breath breath is an anchor you just connect with the breath so that you come to the present moment so here breath is used as a anchor your body is used as anchor so since uh, breath is moving all the time it is more easy to kind of establish a relationship with it or may use it as an anchor so start focusing on the incoming and outgoing breath use this breath as an anchor for coming to this present moment you know so for some times for few minutes just focus on the incoming and outgoing breath see how breath touches your nostril while incoming and outgoing how it goes inside and you know kind of your stomach goes up and down with the incoming and outgoing breath you can see all the sensations and movement happening in the body so you are completely establishing your connection with the body and breath so this is something one can start once you are sufficiently established with the present moment with the breath then you can expand your mindfulness to kind of more other aspects of the body like scanning the body while attending the body one can uh, you know kind of scan the body using different aspects like you know sensing how body feels in the moment whether it is feeling heavy light whatever it is sensation of the body touching uh, either in the ground or the chair whatever it is what kind of sensation you are feeling so use different sense whatever is there is coming to your attention sense of the air touching your skin if they let's say there is a fan or whatever it is you know or the touching of air with your skin feel the tensions in the body if there is any kind of aches and tensions in any part of the body like shoulders or back etc just scan the body throughout and see any tensions any kind of sensations whatever is happening in the body so you establish if you get lost again in the thought processes focus on your breathing use the breath breathing as a anchor in the present moment so from the breath you can expand your mindfulness to the body scanning you can kind of sense the body and kind of establish connection with the body one can kind of do this exercise itself like scanning body could itself be a full exercise or you can expand it more and more so once body scanning is done one can expand the practice of mindfulness to the mind itself that that we have already discussed how mindfulness is used to deal with the thoughts so that's basically mindfulness in the thought thought aspects so while attending the mind one can sense and observe what is going on in the mind in terms of whether your overall mood is tired or energized what is there what is the sensations in the mind are you feeling restlessness are you feeling steady are you feeling anxious are you feeling calmness all these feelings emotions and thought processes could be there you know thoughts and emotions could be connected to it so in mindfulness as we have already says you don't judge it you don't say this is not the right thing this is i should feel something else whatever is there you just observe your task is to remain connected with the present moment and observe whatever is going on in the mind and emotional sphere no you don't try to change anything you don't judge anything you just observe no involvement you can observe your passing thoughts you may see multiple thoughts coming and going and going just like breath you observe them don't make any establish don't say this thought should come this should not come this is good this is bad don't make any active involvement uh, so you just remain as a witness and observe whatever is happening whatever thoughts come let it come whatever emotions come come whatever sensation comes come so just observe it so if you can maintain that state automatically all these things will not bother you because you are not involved in it it is happening in your body you are just observing it so the moment you kind of cling to it you get lost in it and negative emotions means you become negative negative thoughts means you become 
you think like that. So, everything becomes very personalized. So, the mindfulness helps you to step back and do not get involved in it. Whatever happens, happens automatically the mom, because you are not giving energy to it, they will lose energy and slowly, slowly they will decrease. So, whatever is happening. So, that is the whole basic approach. So, you can do mindfulness in the thought processes and the emotions like this. One can even do mindfulness in the surroundings also. Let us say while walking, while eating, one can also do mindfulness by connecting with the surrounding. So, one can attend to the surrounding in so many ways. For example, whatever you see, just see, do not think about it. See whatever the, whatever the things and materials or whatever is available, just observe it. Another most powerful thing is that you use your sense of hearing, you can close your eyes and hear whatever is, whatever sound is there. Do not say, do not judge the sound. Some sound could be there, no birds, birds, some, some bird may be singing, there may be sound of fan or AC, whatever it is, just observe, hear them. The moment you just completely get immersed in hearing, thought will stop automatically because then there will not be energy for thoughts your whole attention goes in the hearing itself or in the sight itself. So, thought automatically stops. So, you kind of experience that piece of thoughtlessness. So, you can connect with the surrounding by observing sights without judgment, hearing sounds or maybe uh, hearing any smell if there are any smells like that all these five senses can be used to establish connection with the surrounding in the present moment and coming to the present moment. In all these things, one can use breath as a kind of anchor. If mind get lost, one can come back to the breath and establish connection and then focus on other aspects. So, the idea is be in the moment without adding any narrative or speculations. Simply know what is present just now in this moment. So, there is the whole philosophy whole idea or mechanisms of mindfulness. You, know. you can be mindful in, of anything internal, external, the object is not important, but the, the whole approach is important. What is the approach? The same approach is there whether you are observing thoughts, whether observing your emotions, whether observing your body or you are observing surroundings. The mental attitude is same. You are paying attention without judgment. So, that is the central part of it content can change. So, this is how mindfulness is done and it can do lot of wonders. Obviously, it needs some practice to kind of get into that mode and uh, once you are kind of established in this mode of practice, um, all kinds of thoughts and emotions one can kind of come out very easily and kind of detach oneself very easily uh, without losing themselves in the stream of thoughts and emotions. Uh, so, a lot of sufferings could be reduced by mindfulness. That is why research shows mindfulness practice can lead to diverse positive impacts, uh, which looks kind of how can one thing do so much of uh, positive impact, because the basic approach is very uh, central where it kind of uh, kind of deals with the root problem that we get involved in all these streams of thoughts and emotions and everything influences us. If that kind of mechanism is uh, kind of at the root we handle it, other things are automatically sorted out. So, that is why uh, it is such an important practice and it can do wonders in terms of uh, mental health, physical health and so on. Uh, so, obviously, uh, there are many structured programs are there for mindfulness uh, where people can do more structured, learn them in a particular context like stress reductions and other things. So, a lot of this uh, structured programs, uh, training programs are available. Uh, this is a lecture where we I just gave a broad overview of the approach itself, but one can practice and learn more and more about it and can uh, use those structured program to get more details about it. So, uh, these are some of the things about the concept of mindfulness. This is one of the strategy where we can use them to for you know adaptive emotion regulations. So, this is uh, this model was about emotion regulation. So, we have discussed uh, kind of uh, various aspects of emotion regulation uh, and uh, we discuss more specifically two broad strategies where we can use them for adaptive emotion regulations. So, with this I stop here and this is uh, the whole module uh, will end here and the next lecture will start another module. With this I stop here. Thank you. Mm -hmm.